Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. Downey and today we're going to be discussing Anavar. Um, this is quite a popular drug and I have a bit of knowledge on uh, this drug, surprisingly. Um, <laughs> because I assisted in compiling research for a, a systematic review and meta-analysis on Anavar oxandrolone in Burns patients. So I've got a bit of interest in this drug. Um, so, today we're going to quickly discuss Anavar only cycles, um, why I don't recommend them, and then we'll go in a bit into the research behind Anavar. And trust me, there's a lot of research on Anavar. Um, so, the reason most people want to do Anavar only cycles is similar to the reason they want to do Primo only or Primobolin only cycles. It's because these are known as the mildest steroids, so they'll get the mildest side effects um and uh the reason for wanting to do an oral only well it means you wouldn't have to inject um as opposed to if you wanted to do uh, i don't know something like testosterone my answer to whether or not you should do an uh anavar only uh, cycle is based on its um just on how it chemically uh, works. So it's a DHT derivative, meaning it doesn't convert into estrogen and it isn't reduced by 5-alpha reductase. Um, however, like um, other steroid, exogenous steroids, it will shut you down, the extent of which depends on your dose as well as the duration. Um, but usually around week four or week six, there tends to be a shutdown, but this is individual dependent. And the issue is there's shutdown of testosterone and it doesn't convert to estrogen. So you'll have low estrogen side effects as well as low testosterone side effects, which result in an amalgamation of problems such as lethargy, loss of libido, lack of energy to go to the gym, brain fog. And this is honestly quite counterproductive if your goal is to maximize your performance in the gym and get gains because you lose testosterone. So you're relying on exandrolone only or anavar only to give you those gains which still you might be able to make gains but uh, in comparison in comparing it to if you were to combine it with testosterone as a base uh, probably not a, your gains wouldn't be as good but um i'm sure most of you know that oral only cycles are not recommended mainly for that reason of shutdown and just it's they're kind of pointless most of the time people go on these cycles and then their results are kind of null and void after the pct um and it looks like they've never even been on the cycle but so, obviously some it may differ for some but in general um this is how that's t how it would usually work um, so let's delve a bit into the science, like the pharmacokinetics and things like that. So um, on consumption of Anavar, it, the concentrations peak at one hour. So some have suggested doing, um, taking it pre-workout and uh, uh, some suggest doing it sublingually in order to avoid having it having to go through the gastrointestinal tract in order to be absorbed. Um, so uh, that it peaks while you're working out and you get the best performance. It's uh, half-life or elimination half-life is nine hours, which means it should be taken twice daily. But some say taking it all at once before a workout and getting that massive peak is more beneficial than stable lower levels. But I'm not sure of that. It hasn't really been tested. Um, it is quite protein bound. 95% tends to bind to protein. So this is the, uh, so on its metabolism, there's a few misconceptions that I'll go uh, just quickly or briefly touch on. So it is quite um, like resistant to liver metabolism or biotransformation in comparison to most other oral steroids. Um, and this means it is less toxic. Um, and a lot of it is actually excreted unchanged through the kidneys. It's uh, approximately 28 
And in one case, they found 60% of oxandrolone went through the kidneys unchanged. But um, some interpret this as it being metabolized by the kidney. I'm not too sure. Or there may have been another study that I'm missing. If that is true, just let me know. But as far as I know, I couldn't find anywhere that it said it was metabolized by the kidneys besides on Wikipedia, which linked to a study I'd already looked at, which didn't mention it was metabolized by the kidneys, but just that it was um, excreted unchanged by the kidneys. That doesn't mean it's metabolized by the kidneys because it wouldn't be excreted unchanged if it was metabolized by the kidneys. Um, well, I mean, it could be, but at the same time, um, yeah. So, um, uh, whilst there is no doubt that at this point that kidneys do play a role in metabolism of certain drugs and biotransformation of drugs, it's relatively new and newer than a lot of the studies done on Anavar or this concept. And so I, I'm not sure where this idea that it was metabolized by the kidney came from. But anyway, that was just a... I was just a tad confused. Um, so the reason that women like this drug is because its anabolic to androgenic ratio is quite um, significant. So it's a lot more anabolic than it is androgenic. It's about 10 to 1. And um, this drug actually antagonizes the, gluco antagonizes the glucocorticoid receptor. So it's a cortisol receptor blocker, which m maximizes your gains and such if you're under stress and obviously that's beneficial in wasting muscle wasting conditions which is why it's popular in those conditions so um, the first study i'm going to look at is oxandrolone and aids wasting myopathy and um, this is one of the better studies it was just better designed than most Again, there are a million, okay, not a million, but a lot of studies done on this. It's a double-blind randomized control trial. Um, remember, anabolic docs, that there aren't many, there are a lot, especially on exandrolone, which is why the systematic uh, review is coming out. Um, so uh, in this trial, they compared placebo to 5 milligrams a day to 15 milligrams a day in these AIDS patients. And they used it for over 16 weeks. Now, if you look at recommendations on sites, it tends to be six to eight weeks as a recommended duration due to hepatotoxicity and such. Um, and if you look at the study, they uh, most of the studies excluded liver disease patients, whereas in <laughs> this is just in reference to my Anadrol video, where they tend to include AIDS patients who had had hepatitis 60 percent of them had had hepatitis recently so that precludes it to this confounding variable of bias but anyway that's a separate topic so they um so i'll show you the results um and as you can see here uh the squares are the 15 milligram a day group the um well like um what's it <laughs> diamonds are uh, five milligrams a day in circle is placebo. And as you see, um, at around the 14th week, the 15 milligram group gained, uh, hit its peak. Um, and, um, and I think, uh, well, yeah, it hit its peak at the, uh, the 14th week, but if you look at the 16th week, that drops to non no significance because it crosses the, line, uh, the zero line. Um, so it's not significant, and that means it's comparable to placebo. Um, so this probably indicates, I'm not sure why it dropped so much to the 16 weeks, but we can postulate that at the 16th week, their androgen levels had been depleted, and or there could have been progression in the disease, but um, it, it would make sense if... Um, their testosterone had decreased to the point that the 15 milligram a day dose, whilst mild and not suppressive, would suppress you at that point and wouldn't be enough to sustain the body weight you just gained. But that's just a hypothesis. Um, so if you look at the 55 milligram, uh, milligram group, it just managed to sustain the weight. It didn't manage to gain any weight uh, for the patients. As it, um, 
and it was comparable to placebo in terms of statistics. So that study kind of just shows that um, uh, 15 milligrams and 5 milligrams are tolerated because there were no side effects, no um, hepatotoxicity, liver damage, you know, um, or any changes to their biomarkers. So it just um, goes to show that at those doses it uh, tends to be safe, however at the same time they aren't particularly anabolic, whilst 15 milligrams is 5 milligrams in uh, is not particularly anabolic, but these were in weak or sickly patients, which is a bit different. So if you look here, this is just one of multiple pages of studies done on um, Anavar or Xyandrolone, and they, there are varying durations, and all of which is, um, have p-values less than 0 0.05, meaning it's quite significant, and all of them uh, mention that there was a gain in weight. So it seems from these studies that 20 milligrams a day is well tolerated, and the incidence of um, liver dysfunction and such uh, are negligible. Um, there is a mild transaminitis, but that was only noticed in a study where they used it for over a year um, with a high uh, with a higher dose. So it's dose dependent and duration dependent. Um, so I managed to see that only 39% of all of the studies on oxandrolone reported um, raises in liver enzymes. Um, and in terms of virilization to women, there were out of a thousand patients, only 14, thousand female patients, only 14 had it virilizing effects. So uh, it is quite low. So about 1.4%. Um, so oh, 1.4, 0 0.14%, sorry. So, um, and it's another thing that was noticed, however, is that there were cholesterol or changes to cholesterol in all of these studies where HDL was affected quite a bit with a bit of an increase in LDL, but it wasn't as significant as the HDL. There were some psychiatric disturbances, but at the same time, individuals who are ill are at risk of psychiatric um, disturbances. There's a bit of edema, swelling in patients, but they had already had heart failure. Um, not many looked at shutdown and at what point there would be shutdown, but we, so we have to kind of extrapolate that from other studies and other um, studies on androgens. Um, and they, none really looked at high doses, so um, a lot of the times they just found that in comparison to placebo, these patients just maintain their weight better, but some did find an increase in weight. Um, and then I obviously would have been interested to see UNDs, which would indicate your kidney function and see if that changed because of the, the individual stating it's metabolized by the kidneys, but I would assume it wouldn't be too drastic. But what about um, bodybuilding doses? Uh, so there are actually a few that looked at 80 milligrams a day. Um, in this one study, unfortunately, a lot of these 80 milligram a day studies weren't really looking at anabolism and such as an end goal and were um, just looking at um, <laughs> values that uh, supported that if they were no longer malnourished. So um, in this one study, they looked at protein energy, um, malnutrition, um, secondary to alcoholic hepatitis or swelling of the liver secondary to alcohol abuse. And this is an RCT with a massive sample size of about 200, but they weren't really looking at the end uh, markers or endpoints that we would be interested in. Um, so in these patients, they were treated for 80 milligrams for one month and then 40 milligrams a day for two months. So 80 milligrams a day for one month and then uh, two months, uh, 40 milligrams a day, two months um, thereafter. Um, whilst they didn't really look at 
typical endpoints we'd like to look at, they did just uh, find that there was no hepatic dysfunction, so liver dysfunction or anything else in that. They, the liver function actually improved with an improvement of body weight, which is to be expected at such a dose. Um, so um, there was one study where they looked at 200 milligrams a day in uh, women with breast cancer, but I'll do that in a different video. That took me a long time to find that study, but it was interesting. Well, not really, it was a bad study, but it's just an interesting topic. Um, but I'll do that in a different video. So, um, in summary, no, you should not do an anavar only cycle as um, you'll experience shutdown and the gains might not be as uh, massive or as substantial as if you were to pair it with testosterone as a base to ensure you're not shut down. You might also feel crappy on the cycle. And in terms of Anavar and its toxicity, it seems well tolerated in a lot of studies up to um, doses of 80 milligrams a day. Um, but the uh, liver dysfunction does seem to be dose and duration dependent. Um, but most studies uh, looking at uh, doses up to 20 milligrams did not find issues unless they extended it beyond 16 weeks. So it seems to be well tolerated with the stimulation of appetite and increase in lean muscle mass. Or well, that's another criticism. They didn't really look at lean muscle mass. They looked at total weight in most of these studies. So yeah, I hope you learned something about Anavar, and I hope you look forward to the video where I discuss the 200 milligrams of Anavar a day. Um, but um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Let me know what you think, if you disagree with anything, and I'll respond. <laughs> so thank you.